Hi, everybody. Welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 22 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to any new viewers. Thank you. Thank you for checking out my podcast, and welcome back to any returning viewers. I love that you're here. Today is a nice foggy Friday in May where I'm coming to you from on the Northern California coast. We have a Ravelry group that you should totally go join. It is linked in the description box and um, it's under Squirrel Pie Productions in Ravelry. That is where you'll find threads for show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's also where you'll find giveaways, knit-alongs, and a bunch of other fun stuff, so go check that out and join if you haven't yet. We do have a knit-along that's running right now. It's a make-along, actually, so more than just knitting is allowed. It's the mini scrap-along, and it's coming to a close pretty soon. It is running through June 1st, and there is a thread in the Ravelry group where you can go and enter your progress in any project that you are using, scraps, minis, leftovers, anything, fabric, yarn, fiber, whatever you got, whatever's small and little that you're using in your projects, it qualifies. So go check out the thread. It's got all the stuff in it that you need to know. Post pictures of your progress. You don't need to finish anything. And I will be drawing prizes next podcast episode from that thread and also from Instagram, anything that's hashtagged mini scrap along. So get on it. You've got a week left to keep working on your projects and post pictures. And uh, I'm going to draw for prizes next episode. I'm really excited. I have one of the prizes to show you. Um, I have showed it before, but just a reminder, this is what you can win. This is a beautiful mini skein set from Dyer Bear Yarns. I love it. It's also got some delicious tea in there. So you can win that. The other lucky winner is going to win a skein of Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand dyed yarn company. And I will show you later what that prize is gonna be because it's my new colorway that I will show you in the shop update section, which comes later. So mini scrap along. I have not worked on my mini scrap along project again this last week, but oh well. Um, But you guys have, and I have been loving what you guys have been doing. I've been looking at all the pictures that you've been putting in the Revelry thread and on Instagram, and you guys are making awesome things. Oh my God, I love everything you guys are making. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. You guys are the best. Anyway, thank you for participating if you have. And uh, if you haven't yet and want to, there's still time. You got a week to join in and win one of two lovely prizes. Yeah, so that's that. Is that it? Is that all that stuff? That's all that stuff. Okay. Coffee in my dinosaur cup. There's a dinosaur inside this cup. You can't see it though inside the coffee. I am going to start off this week with my sewing segment because I am wearing it. This is my new sewn dress and I'm super duper excited about it. It's the Coco dress by Tilly and the Buttons. This is the second time I've made this. The first time I made the top version, this time I made the dress. This is some jersey fabric that I got from Joann's last month and I love it. Okay, I'm gonna stand up and show you what it looks like. I'm gonna do my little roll back and stand up. So this is it. It's this like mauve and blue and white, like kind of, what do you call it? Like watercolor sort of print. Oh, I love it. So the Coco dress is this, what is it? Like a shift style jersey dress. Oh, and I love how it came out. It's got this awesome boat neck, set in sleeves. I did three quarter length sleeves and it's a little bit above the knee (laughs) and 
And I just am super in love with this garment. It is the same style. I'm going to scoot back to you guys now of garment that uh, I made for my last sewing project, which was the Agnes top turned into a dress. Um, it's a very favorite silhouette of mine, this sort of fitted jersey long t-shirt. I think it's like a shift style dress. I love it. I love this neckline. I love a good boat neck and oh, I just love the cocoa pattern so much. It, did require some modification for me. Um, the cocoa dress sewn as is in the smallest size was too big for me. It was too wide and I went into it making this dress kind of already knowing that. I've made the cocoa top once before and I still have it. I do wear it and it is a little wide. It looks a little weird on me because it's just a little, it's a little too wide. Um, but I still wear it and like it. And I knew that was probably going to be the case going into this, but I did it anyway just to see because I wanted to try it again. And it was too wide. And this time, because it was a dress, it looked like a nightshirt on me. <laughs> so I, I sewed the smallest size, um, which according to the measurements on the pattern should fit me. So I it probably fit me the way it's supposed to, but maybe it's just not my style to have something that big. I like things a little more fitted, I guess. Um, but it, I was swimming in it. Like it looked like I was wearing pajamas. And the nice thing about this dress pattern is that it feels like you're wearing pajamas, which is good, but it looked like I was wearing pajamas. So I decided to go back in and take it in a little more. Um, I, took in the side seams from the sleeve down to the bottom, an extra, I don't know, maybe half inch or so. I kind of just winged it. And I did that after the fact. So I sewed all the pieces together and then I took it in. And it worked. It might not have been the best way to do it. Actually, I think it was fine. I don't know, I'm not that experienced. But it worked out really well. Like it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel, what's the word? I don't know the word. It doesn't feel janky, you know, like the seams are done after the fact. It feels like it, how it's supposed to feel. Anyway, that helped so much. Um, one of the stylistic things I think about the cocoa pattern is that it's got these kind of wider sleeves and that looks so cool on a lot of people, but I don't like it for me. I, like I said, I like things a little more fitted, especially sleeves. I don't like a baggy sleeve. Um, so that fixed the sleeve problem. They fit like super fine now and the whole thing just fits a lot better after I did that. So what I'm thinking I might do, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking about going to the pattern pieces themselves and creating a new smaller size. I don't know if that's like a thing people do or if it'll work, <laughs> but I feel like it might work. I'm just going to go in and look at all of the lines for all the sizes and then just continue, like copy that for a smaller size, if that makes sense. I think it's gonna work, but we'll see. I'll try it and if it doesn't work, I'll just maybe go back to sewing it, like cutting out the pieces how they were and just creating a bigger seam allowance. Anyway, point is, I freaking love this garment. I'm so, so happy I made it. I'm out of jersey fabric now. So I gotta get more so I can make more. I love this so much. Tilly and the Buttons, awesome pattern writing company. Coco Dress, awesome pattern. I did not do the pockets because I didn't want to. And I love it. I seriously love this thing. I made it last weekend, I washed it. Today's my first day actually wearing it and I'm stoked, super duper stoked. Yes. Sewing. I will talk a little later about other sewing patterns I wanna make coming up because the sewing bug is strong 
in me right now. I want to make all the dresses. So, let's talk about what I have been knitting. I do have a finished object, because I'm cool like that. They are my stranded socks. They're done, and they're gorgeous, and I'm in love with them. This is Stranded Dye Works, an awesome indie dyed yarn company out of England, um, from the dyer Amy, who is also behind the awesomely awesome podcast, The Stranded Podcast. And these are my fake entry into her Brit Knit Cal, because she is hosting a knit along where you can knit using any UK based hand dyed yarn. Maybe not hand dyed, UK based yarn. And uh, I don't necessarily qualify because my yardage doesn't meet her qualifications for yardage, but I'm a cheater and I'm knitting along in spirit. So <laughs> uh, this is her reef dive colorway on her paradise base, which is the merino cashmere nylon. This yarn was so graciously gifted to me in a yarn swap that I did, and I love it so much. I'm so happy I got to try Amy's yarn, because it's beautiful. Yeah. So this is a vanilla sock. I cast on and did the cuff with a size zero with 56 stitches. And then the body of the sock is on a size one, and I do both of those. The ones are high, high sharps. The zeros are knitters, pride, carbons. And I do a slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset, which you can't really see, but it's there, trust me. And then the toe is my very favorite rounded toe with the Kitchener finish. And I love these socks. They fit super duper well, and they're super squishy. Here's the other one. This colorway is gorgeous. It's crazy bright, and I love it. And I loved knitting these socks. They were super fun. So, I think this is, I feel like I always just make up numbers for this. I feel like this is pair number six for the year. But when you bind off one pair of socks, you obviously have to cast on another. Which brings me to whips. So, love you, FO. My first whip is my new sock cast on, and it's living in my new project bag, which was so kindly gifted to me by Chevis, who is Chevy Rail on Instagram. She sent me this package because she is awesome. And in it was this project bag that she made which is a library themed knitting bag. Oh my God, I love it so much. <sighs> of course, that's where you can find me in a library. I love this bag, Chevas. Thank you so much for your kind gift. I love it, I love it, I love it. She also sent me these stitch markers that she made. Thank you again. Thank you so much. This is the coolest knitting bag in the whole entire world. Anyway, living in my new project bag is my new sock cast on. You want to know what this is? Can you tell? Can you tell what this is? Ooh, it matches me. <gasps> I am so cool. Oh my god. Okay, so my yarn apparently matches my outfit. Okay, so this is Jinx Yarns. <laughs> Jinx Yarns is an amazing yarn dyer and I love her stuff. And this is the Grainbow colorway. This is a self-striping colorway that I have been after for so long. I finally bought it, I think like a couple months ago. And it's been staring at me ever since and I'm finally knitting with it. And I'm so excited because I've always wanted to knit with this colorway. This is her sport base, so it's her strong sport base. And here is her label, which is wonderful and gorgeous. 
So the green belt colorway is a self-striping colorway that is a muted rainbow, a muted gray-toned rainbow. I love it. Freaking love it. Freaking love it. Here's what I have so far. I'm not very far in, but it is causing me so much happiness. You don't even know. So since this is a sport weight yarn, I go up a needle size and I cast on and do the cuff with a size one and then I'll do the body of the sock in a size one and a half. And these are Knitter's Pride Carbons and I do magic loop for socks. And it's so much fun. Um, I also go down stitch count since it's sport weight. So I do these on a size, I do these with a, I am doing these. I am doing these uh, with a 48 stitch count. And that's super fun because it makes it super quick. And I love them so much. Super, super love them. Beautiful. Super beautiful. And oh, <laughs> okay, so um, Susan in the last episode of the Knit Lib podcast, hi Susan, if you don't watch the Knit Lib podcast, you should, because it's really good. She did a little segment in her podcast where she showed what was in her knitting bag and put a call out to other people to show what was in their knitting bags. And I am going to do that only to show you how boring I am because I don't keep anything. Because I'm boring. So, as you saw, I have my cake of yarn, my project, the tag that the yarn goes on, that the yarn, that goes with the yarn. Those all live in the project bag that I currently use for the project, as does any other needles that I might need, which in this case are my size one Haya Haya Sharps, which I did use for the cuff, and I will use for the cuff for the second sock. And that's it. I'm not cool enough to keep like lotion bars or chapstick or like chocolate or like stitch markers, notions, scissors, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I just put what I, I just put the project in it. I wish I kept that other cool stuff in my project bags, but I don't. <laughs> so, there you go. Super boring Tommy over here with nothing cool in her project bag, but it's okay because the coolness of this project bag totally makes up for it. So, obviously, we all already knew this. Susan is cooler than me. She is a librarian, so she's obviously cooler than me. Anyway. These are my rainbow socks, and I love them. So, what am I working on next? My exploration station, that's what. In my Gastly's bag that I made is my exploration station and it is the best pattern ever. Seriously, no joke. So there's so much stuff in here, oh my God. Get it together, Trujillo. Get it together. Here it is, ah! So I have been working on this. It is the Exploration Station Shawl Pattern by Stephen West. And I am knitting this for the Keep On Knitting Kitten Cow, which is being hosted by Becky of the Stringing It Together podcast and Hannah of the Crafty Chat podcast. And you guys, I love Stephen West so much for making this pattern. Oh, I love it. So, I am using my own hand dyed yarn, which is Moonstone Dye Works, for all four colors. And color A is Valerie. 
and this is on a single ply 100 percent or not 100 percent single ply superwash merino and stellina base and this was an experimental colorway that i turned out to be super in love with so i need to figure out how to recreate it it's a purple with speckles of hot pink and darker purple and color b is mild envy this one is a mint with darker mint speckles on my Stellina sock base. Color C is Lover's Rock, which is a really vague mauve pink with brown speckles. This is on my Merino fingering base, 100% superwash Merino. And color what is that? A, B, C, D. Color D is my very favorite colorway that I have dyed. And this is the floating colorway. And this is um, really muted tones of kind of greens and purples with hot pink and purple speckles. And here she is again. So I have finished the wedge section and have moved on to the brioche section, which is so much fun. I've done one color brioche before. Um, Pearl Soho put out a cowl. I don't know what it's called, but I will link it in the show notes. And it's brioche, it's one color brioche. And I have started knitting that cowl twice. Didn't finish it either time. I loved the brioche, but just never finished it. Um, and this is my first time doing two color brioche. And oh my God, it's so much fun. I love it so much. I love it so much. Look at that. Look at how fun that is. Oh my God, look at how fun that is. I love brioche so much. Seriously, so much fun. I did watch Stephen West's tutorial for section B of the exploration station, which goes over each row of the brioche section and what you need to do. And it was super helpful. And I, after the first few rows, I kind of got the gist of it and was able to just do it on my own pretty easily. I did go down a needle size for the brioche section. So for most of the shawl, I have been using a size six needle on my Knit Picks interchangeable wood needles. But for the brioche section, I went down to a size five. And that is because I heard that tip from other podcasters because brioche is can be looser and I'm happy with it I'm like super happy I went down a needle size it's the gauge is beautiful I just love it freaking love it and living on this shawl is my brand new stitch marker so I bought this stitch marker from Tilting Planet which is an awesome Etsy shop that makes these awesome stitch markers and she dyes yarn I fell in love with the stitch marker. I saw it on Instagram and I needed it, so I bought it. And it just came yesterday and I put it on my project as soon as it showed up because this project was lacking a progress keeper. And I don't use progress keepers to keep progress. I just use them to be decorative. And I love it. It makes me really happy. So that's Tilting Planet. You should totally check out her Etsy shop. Her stuff is gorgeous. She sells these progress keepers, which I just am super obsessed with. I don't know if you can tell, I'm sure you can tell. Full of these shiny star confetti things. Oh, I love it. And um, she's she sells yarn too, and so far I've only seen, I think, one colorway that she dyes, but it's beautiful, it's pink. So check her out. I love what it's bringing. I love the pizzazz it's bringing to my exploration station shawl. And like I said, these are all Moonstone Dye Works colorways. Most of these colorways are still available in the shop on Etsy. So check that out if you would like to. This is mostly what I've been working on this week because I love it. It's so much fun. I'm almost done with the brioche section and then I will move on. There's a couple more stitch pattern sections. This is my favorite thing ever. Yes. Yes. 
that it for that? That's it for that. Next up, last project I've been working on in terms of knitting is in my Fat Squirrel Fibers project bag. It's the Salal Cardigan by Andy Satterland. And it's awesome. I finished the body. So, I pretty much have a vest so far. That's what I got. This is the Salal Cardigan by Andy Satterland. You can find it in Stranded Magazine. Fall, winter edition maybe? I'll link to it in the show notes, of course. And my needle just fell out of it. Something else I keep in my knitting bag, a needle that I needed to kitchener. So <laughs> this is Green Mountain Spinnery. It is Ramboulet, I believe. And it's in their New Mexico organic base. This is a DK weight yarn. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this yarn so much. It's this grayish brownish oatmeal y color. And I love it. This cardigan has this really beautiful lace detailing here at the top of the front panels. And it's got a one by one ribbing at the bottom. And the pattern did not call for this, but I did a tubular bind off because I quite enjoy the tubular bind off. And it came out really, really nice. I really like it. So all I have left to do now is to pick up and knit the sleeves, which I believe are three quarter length sleeves. If they're not, I'm probably gonna make them three quarter length sleeves because I like three quarter length sleeves. And then I'm sure there's a button band that I'll do too. And then I'll have to put buttons on. I don't have buttons for this, but We'll see what happens with that. I'll get some buttons. This is some of my favorite construction types for cardigans. I've done this once before with one of her patterns and I really liked it. Um, what she does is you knit top down and you leave an armhole open and then you go in and you pick up stitches around the armhole and you do short rows for the sleeve cap and then join in the round and knit the rest of the sleeve. Um, I love that sleeve construction style a lot. So I'm super excited about this cardigan. It's getting really close to being done. It's a cropped cardigan, which I love. I like wearing cropped cardigans over dresses with a fitted bodice and a flared skirt. I think it's super cool and I can't wait till this is done so I can wear it. And I started with Here's all my needles. Again, what's in my bag. Here is the leftovers of the last ball that I used. I started with five skeins of yarn. I have three still. So I've only used two and all I have left to do are the sleeves and the button band. So I'm gonna have a lot of yarn left over, I believe. Here is the next skein that I will be using, which I have not caked up yet. And there you go. Check out this yarn. It's gorgeous. I don't know how available it is. I got it at Stitches West 2015, maybe 16. And I have been kind of coveting it for a really long time. And I finally found the perfect pattern for it. So I will link in the show notes to the tutorial that I like to use for the tubular bind off. Um, it's a really simple technique that I highly recommend if you haven't used it yet, but it always is nice to have a little reminder for me of the certain steps and a really clear, simple, not over explanatory version of this is from Pearl Soho. I really like that one. So I'll link to that in the show notes. And you can check that out if you'd like. So that's everything I've been knitting. It has been really fun. I really like my projects this week quite a lot. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about sewing again. I really 
really want to use this fabric that I have in my stash that I'm gonna go get right now. So this is some double gauze fabric and it's it's kind of a I don't know if most double gauzes are like this but it's it's kind of stiffer it's on the stiffer side I don't know if you can see that but <laughs> it's really gorgeous and I really love it and I have three yards of it and I really wanted to make a birthday dress out of this and I couldn't find anything what I was hoping for for this fabric was some sort of fitted bodice that had like a neckline that went like to here and sleeves I didn't really care sleeveless short sleeves three quarters whatever um, but pretty much a fitted bodice with a flared skirt right that's what I wanted for this fabric I can't find anything that I think would be good I'm still not done looking but so far I haven't found anything um, so I'm saving this fabric until I do find something I really wanted just something really simple with really simple lines that would fit. I have found things that wouldn't fit. I have found things that pretty much what I want that don't go down small enough for me. So that's too bad, but I will keep looking and I will find something to make with this fabric because I love this fabric. It's beautiful, but this will not be my birthday dress this year. This might be my birthday dress. We'll see if I don't make anything before next week, which is when my birthday is. But I was looking around on the internet like you do when you are looking for sewing patterns. And while I didn't find anything for that, I did find some other patterns that I totally bought and I'm really excited about. So I pretty much went through all of the smaller independent pattern companies that I like, including Deer and Doe, which is a French sewing pattern company. They have beautiful stuff and they do make patterns in my size. I didn't find what I wanted for that dress, but I found a couple other things. Um, I will put pictures of them here and try to tell you what they're called, even though I probably won't be able to pronounce them well. Um, and this was last night, so I actually ordered the paper pattern. So I don't know when I'll actually get them in the mail, but I'll show you when I do get them. I bought the, <laughs> I'm totally not gonna say this right the Auberpeen dress, which looks like this. And it's beautiful and I can't wait to make it. I also bought the Arum, Arum dress, which looks like this and I also love it. As soon as I checked out and bought those two patterns, I immediately regretted not getting the cardamom dress. I really want this one too, but oh well. Two patterns is good enough for now. So now I need to buy fabric for those. That's gonna be fun. And when I get them in the mail, I can make them. And I'm really excited about that. In the meantime, I will just have to buy some more Jersey fabric and continue making Agnes dresses and Coco dresses, which is good because I could use like a million more of those. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about sewing right now. I think my next sewing project is to oil my machine, which you should do every once in a while. I will link to a tutorial in the show notes that I have used to oil my machine and it was super helpful because I didn't really know how to oil my machine until I watched it. Watched it. Um, it's from Fancy Tiger Crafts and it's a video tutorial. I will find it and I will link it because it's awesome. I think I need to do that soon in my machine. Up next, shop update. I am having a shop update tomorrow, which is Saturday, May 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And this week I only have one new colorway that I'm putting up in the shop. There's still stuff from the last update available in the shop, so check that out if you're interested. But I'm really excited about this new colorway that I came up with, and I dyed a bunch of it. It is called Moon Age Daydream. And it looks like that. And I love it so much. So it is, let me take this off so I can show you. There it 
there's a bunch of stuff in here, including teals and pinks and yellows and grays. I really, really like this one. And I got it on Merino Singles, Merino Fingering, and Stellina Sock. So, Moon Age Daydream, based on David Bowie, because I was listening to Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars when I dyed it. And I am in honor of my birthday. I am going to do a coupon code for my shop starting right now, as soon as you're watching this, as soon as it comes out, it's gonna be active. And this coupon code is going to run through the end of my birthday, May 31st. So this is um, a discount that I'm gonna be offering you in honor of my birthday, 20% off of anything in the shop, including Moon Age Daydream. And the coupon code, which I was super excited, this is the first coupon code I've ever come up with. And I was like, this has to be really good. So I thought about it for a long time. And I decided on Glitter Skull. So for 20% off anything in the Moonstone Dye Works Etsy shop right now through May 31st, 2017, coupon, coupon code Glitter Skull, that's G-L-I-T-T-E-R-S-K-U-L-L. -L. I'll put it on the screen. Gets you 20% off. So, yay. So that's pretty much it for shop update. There's still a bunch of stuff in the shop, and then this is going to be added tomorrow at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Tomorrow is Saturday, May 27th. I really am really, really happy with this colorway. So check that out. That's going to be fun. I might be claiming this my birthday colorway, so whatever that means. Makes everything better to be about a birthday. As for favorites, I don't know. I've been kind of obsessed with Amy Winehouse lately. Like I said in the last episode, I'm a late adopter. And I'm just discovering Amy Winehouse. She's amazing. She was a musician. I don't know when. Recently, but she has since passed away. And she was incredible. And I'm obsessed with her right now. Uh, obsessed. I'm also super excited about the new Twin Peaks. Which I haven't watched yet, but it's out. Twin Peaks is one of my very favorite television shows of all time. I love it. And I was in denial about there being a new season. Um, I had heard about it. I'd seen the advertisements actually on Instagram for a while and I would see it and I'd be like, what's that? And I just ignored it. And I finally, the day before it debuted, decided to actually look into it. And it sounds amazing. David Lynch is actually a part of it and I'm so excited. I'm really excited about the new season of Twin Peaks. I haven't watched it yet because I'm scared. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> New things happen and I get excited, but I like need to wait. I just like need to wait. I think mostly the reason why I haven't watched it yet, it came out like this last week, is because the first episode is two hours long. I need to be ready for that. I need to like be ready. I think I needed to wait till the weekend to watch the first episode. Yeah, I'm super excited about the new Twin Peaks. That's the TV and music I'm excited about this week. Amy Winehouse and Twin Peaks. That's going to bring me to the end of my podcast. Thank you so much for watching. I, again, really, really appreciate you being here. And I hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and would like to be kept up to date on future episodes. Go join the Ravelry group. Join the mini scrap along. You have one week left. Oh, by the way, uh, duh. So <laughs> the Moon Age Daydream colorway is going to be one of the prizes for the mini scrap along. So, yay. Anyway, join it. You have a week left to win either Moon Age Daydream or Dire Bear Yarns mini skein set. I hope you guys are having a great week. 
have fun, stay awesome. I will see you next week. Bye.